It's nearly Christmas time and I'm getting quite excited now because Christmas can be a fabulous time of the year, but it can also prove quite stressful and dangerous, particularly with houses maybe busier than usual. Maybe they're brimming with overexcited little ones. Maybe the grandparents and the in-laws have come to visit. Because according to the NHS, here in the UK, more than 80,000 people have to go to A&E with Christmas-related injuries. This means that learning first aid is really important, as doctors and chemists are likely to be closed at Christmas. And knowing what to do can help prevent an unnecessary trip to hospital, ensuring you can spend more time with your family and loved ones, rather than sitting in a hospital waiting room. But it can also mean the difference in some cases between life and death. So make sure you watch this video all the way through to the end because you never know when you might learn something that could make a difference in your homes. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the accidents and injuries that can occur in your home at Christmas or at any time of the year. So you know how to be prepared and also you're gonna know how to help somebody. Be interested to know actually, have you got your Christmas decorations up? Because there is a debate, isn't there, about when we should put it up. Some people say the 1st of December, some people say we should wait for the 12th night. What's your opinion? Now you can see I've got my Christmas tree decorated and I've got some decorations outside in the garden as well. Because decorating our homes can bring us joy. But it is so important to ensure we're careful when undergoing this seemingly safe task, as there are lots of hidden risks involved. So let's talk about some of those risks about decorations. First of all, let's talk about the fairy lights you can see here. Always make sure when you are putting fairy lights up, you check them over first. You make sure they're not frayed, make sure there's no bulbs missing, make sure there's no bits of wire sticking out, make sure they're all safe and intact and okay to use. Because what we don't want is an electrical fire being caused by one at a later date. And also make sure that when you plug all these lights in, because in my garden, for example, I've got quite a lot of lights, but I've got to make sure I spread out where I plug them in. We don't want to overload the sockets because of course that can cause an electrical fire as well. So do think about um, using too many extension leads. Keep it down to a minimum. Now also when hanging these fairy lights, whether they're on the Christmas tree, trying to reach to the top, or ones outside, maybe on the front of the house or in the back garden, make sure you've got something safe to stand on. Don't just stack up loads of pillows and see if you can stand on them or wobble off the edge of a sofa. Make sure you have a sturdy platform, such as a step ladder or a platform to be able to stand on. Because obviously if you fall off, you're gonna injure yourself. We're gonna have spinal injuries, fractures, and um, concussion, lots of injuries around, um, the, around falling. So please make sure you are safe when you're doing so. Make sure that any spare wires are tucked away so nobody trips over them. You know, when young children are running around or pets are chasing each other, make sure that the wires are kept safe. Now, if somebody does have an electric shock in your home, you must know what to do. First of all, you must turn off the power. Do you know where your power switch is in your home? If not, stop this video right now and go and find. Go and ask somebody, go and find it. Because you must turn the power if someone's being electrocuted. And then you can assess if they're still breathing or not. If they're not, please call 99 and do CPR. Now, the smaller decorations in the house, such as little LED snowmen that you might have around the house, they normally have button cell batteries inside. Now, we did a video about this earlier, um, and I'll leave the link for that video down below. Because button cell batteries are really, really dangerous. Button cell batteries can burn. So keep those little decorations out of the way of children and also pets because you don't want them to be able to swallow a button cell battery. And if you do suspect someone has, stay calm and go to hospital with them as quick as possible because unfortunately that button cell battery doesn't pass all the way through. Now the combination of hot fat, boiling water and sharp knives is a recipe for disaster in a kitchen. I would always try and keep other people, especially children and pets, out of the kitchen while you're busy doing a Christmas dinner. Try and avoid drinking alcohol until after the cooking and make sure you wipe up any hot oils and spills immediately. Now, common injuries that can happen will be burns and bleeding. So if you do get burnt by something in the kitchen or anywhere, then make sure you put whatever's been burnt underneath cool water for at least 20 minutes and ideally longer if you can. Keep it under there for 20 minutes under running water. Afterwards, 
you then maybe have an exposed wound. You need to cover it with something. Cling film is ideal. So loosely wrap cling film over. The reason is, is so it stops infection from getting in. Now, please don't listen to any other relatives that tell you to do anything else other than put water on there. Do not put anything else other than water onto a burn. If it starts to blister, do not burst it either. Just run it under cool water for 20 minutes, loosely wrap cling film, and then go and seek some medical attention with that burn. Now, you might also accidentally cut yourself in the kitchen. And if you find someone's bleeding, yourself or somebody else, then you need to make sure you wash the wound to keep it nice and clean. And then if it's on somebody else, make sure you put your gloves on and you're going to get some kind of dressing and you're going to apply pressure onto the wound. And you're going to put pressure on there until the bleeding stops. And then you can just bandage and tidy it up. Now, if you've accidentally cut your finger off, you know, as you're cutting the turkey maybe, then make sure you find the severed bit, you wrap that up in cling film and you put it next to ice. Obviously you need to treat the person's hand as well when the fingers come off, that's quite important. And make sure that person and the severed bit does go to A&E as well. Just make sure you don't put the severed bit straight onto ice because ice burns. Now you've cooked that lovely Christmas meal and everyone's sitting down at the Christmas table ready to eat. We've got another hazard there, choking. Now it's not only at the Christmas dinner table where choking can happen, because at Christmas time there's loads of sweets and the small little toys that children even adults can put in their mouth and they can choke on. Choking is basically when something's gone down the wrong hole, it's gone into your airways and it's causing you not to be able to breathe. And your hands tend to go around the throat, the eyes will be popping out of the head and they won't be able to shout for help. And that's the scary thing about choking, somebody can't shout for help. And they might get quite embarrassed about choking or coughing excessively, especially in this current climate, so they might take themselves away somewhere quiet. If you do see someone just get up and walk, I would follow them just to make sure they're okay. So if you do see someone choking, you've identified they're choking, you've asked them, then tell them to cough. Coughing can actually expel the object out. That's not working. Then you're gonna lean them forward and using the heel of your hand, you're gonna do up to five back slaps between their shoulder blades. Check in to see if the objects come out each time. If that hasn't worked, we're then going to go to up to five abdominal thrusts. If that hasn't worked, we're going to call the ambulance and we're going to keep on repeating until either it comes out or they drop to the floor unconscious and that is when we begin CPR on them. Now Christmas can be one of the most stressful times of the year. The combination of drink, relatives, lack of sleep and the burden of a Christmas celebration and Christmas entertaining can sometimes prove too much. Always try and create you know, somewhere that people, particularly the elderly, particularly the grandparents, can actually just go and escape for some peace and quiet. Because excessive stress can trigger a heart attack. Now a heart attack could be suspected if someone's complaining of chest pain, they've gone very pale in colour, and they're maybe gone very light-headed, they're having problems breathing. If you suspect a heart attack, make sure you sit them on the floor in the W position, which is when the knees are slightly bent, they're leaning slightly back, and you call 999. The person might also have medication with them for this reason. They might actually have a spray, it's called a GTN spray, they might spray underneath their tongue. Tell them to take it if they do. Or maybe you have some aspirin in your cabinet at home. Get out some aspirin and encourage them to take it, unless of course they're allergic to it. Tell them to take some aspirin, four tablets, which is 300 milligrams, and tell them to chew it slowly. What that will do will be to thin the blood, which will hopefully reduce that blood clot. And if they do stop breathing, then make sure you perform CPR. Now, if someone's had a little bit too much to drink and has gone unresponsive, unconscious, but they're still breathing because you've checked their breathing, make sure you put them in the recovery position because that's going to help maintain their airway. Make sure you stay with them, make sure you reassure them and just keep checking them over. Just never make them be sick. If you tell someone to be sick, it can burn the throat on the way up and also cause a blockage. So never ever tell anyone to be sick. Just put them in the recovery position, keep the airway open and keep an eye on them. Now prior preparation is vital to ensure a successful celebration. 
I'd always ensure you've got a first aid kit ready for emergencies and maybe take an online first aid course or a practical first aid course so that you have the skills. You can practice these skills of choking, bleeding, CPR. You can practice these skills beforehand so you can actually deal with this medical emergency. Now I will leave a link below for you so you'll be able to access a free online course plus some paid ones. I'll leave those links there so you can be prepared for your Christmas celebrations. But of course, for all year round, it's not just at Christmas these emergencies can happen. Guys, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and then the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our, any of our other videos. And please don't forget to leave a comment below. It'd be nice to know what you guys are up to for Christmas. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Keep safe, keep well, guys.